um, the impact and uh, there are challenges and you I think yeah, most of you know that it's difficult to uh, to measure and and one of the questions we'd ask is what we really want to uh, to measure and why and is there some kind of universal um, uh, indicator that could fit uh, everyone I'm sure in the way I phrase the sentence you, you kind of had an idea of the answer and and then I'll try to give you as many practical tips uh, as I uh, as I can so you're going to uh, uh, to start actually um, I give you a few examples six examples of, uh, of people and I like you to uh, let me know uh, who you think is financially literate. So you have the number one who is a banker and say, I know what finance is about. Of course, I'm a banker. So number two would be I spend as little as possible and save as much as I can. Number three is I invest uh, my savings in stocks exchange and it's, uh, it's really fun. And uh, there, are, there are some people who did that during the, uh, the pandemic. And uh, number four is as soon as I earn money, I go to the market and buy what I could not buy before. And this number four actually is, is what people usually tell me. Uh, so number five is I bought lots of stuff on the internet and I didn't realize I, uh, I spent uh, too much and I, I, don't, um, I don't know how to pay the rent. And number six is uh, this phone is very nice and flashy, but I prefer to keep my old one and save money to buy a, a bike for my kid. So who do you think is financially literate among these six people? I believe number two is financially literate. So we have six, we have two, and you can yeah, use also the uh, the chat. I can see some... Uh, some answers. Two and six, two, two, six and Okay, so you're hesitating more or less on a, between two and uh, uh, and six. Um, that you didn't choose one because <laughs> knowledge is not enough, and I think we will we'll go through that uh, uh, again. Uh, um, I've uh, well, I can tell you the uh, the experience I have. I was back in two thousand eight before the uh, before the crash, uh, and I was um, uh, had the opportunity to do a lecture in, in Hong Kong for Women's Day at um, uh, Lemon Brothers. You all know what happened to Lemon Brothers in 2008. So that was before the, uh, they disappeared. And um, so I, I gave a talk about financial education and the, the importance of financial education and so on. And at the end of my talk, a few bankers, and they were young bankers uh, working at Lemon Brothers, and they, they came to see me and whispered, you know, I, I have problems. Uh, I just overspend with my credit card. And uh, so... Definitely, um, uh, you can know a lot about finance, but don't apply it. So knowledge is uh, definitely not uh, not enough. And uh, number two um, is a bit of a problem because imagine you have a huge income, you're like a millionaire, and you do that, you spend as little as possible. And, uh, but then it means that how do you make the economy go round really because somebody's income is someone else's expense so uh, in a way the number two is is uh, what happened during the pandemic when people who are still earning money uh, stopped spending because they could not they were blocked at home and the whole economy collapsed so and it's something we, we talk about uh, again it's um it's not say being it's not necessarily being financially educated to uh to spend as little as possible and maybe you just uh spend as little as possible but you uh you don't have a good quality of, uh, of life you don't enjoy anything so uh, what, what's the goal number three uh, it's the you, 
it looks like gambling really to me or just like yeah it's uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, a real sound with uh, proper objectives of how much you want to save for when and when you want to recover this uh, uh, this money and so on so three is uh, uh, is uh, is definitely not financial uh, illiterate five is definitely not but um, actually this person articulates the problems very well. So that's something that would help uh, uh, design a program, actually. If, if internet impulse buying is a problem, you would really focus your program on that. On that. And uh, num I would talk about a number four a bit later. Number six for me is really the, the financial literate person because there's some thinking. Uh, there's priorities between expenses and there's a proper goal of uh, saving money, not to save money for the sake of it, like number two, but with a specific goal to buy uh, a bike for the, uh, for the kid. Number four is typically what uh, very low income people experience is uh, and I, I had this remark several times when I uh, uh, when I ran programs is uh, of course you you cannot buy things because you don't have money so the the day you finally receive some income you're going to finally be able to buy what you uh, uh, you delayed so it's it's not necessarily being financial illiterate to uh, to do that and you have uh, you have to be very careful uh, when you run a program is to um, people might have different mindsets uh, about money and you have to put your shoes um, uh, to, to put yourself into the shoes of somebody who has really a very very low income and irregular income to to see their situation so don't jump into conclusions hey, oh, this person is now uh, is not a financial literate so I put six and maybe maybe four so um Financial education is definitely not about uh, knowledge, and uh, the the OECD uh, has been working a lot, especially after the uh, the two thousand and eight crisis, on defining financial education, financial uh, financial literacy, and and setting an, um, uh, some measurements. And so their definition is really yeah, try to cover everything it's about awareness, knowledge, attitude, skills, behavior, and uh, to make sound financial decisions and ultimately achieve individual financial well-being. We we'll go back to the definition. There are a few things that I I don't like, but uh, we, we'll do that uh, a bit later. So do some of you uh, know that the, the OECD um, has a toolkit to, to measure financial education. So they do it at a country level. Uh, I think the, the last uh, measurement was in 2022. I'll send you the link um, uh, if you're interested. There's, a, uh, there's around 30 or 40 questions. Some are optional, but they, they try to uh, cover things on behavior and uh, there's a whole section about financial products which is uh, obviously very um, it, it doesn't really apply to people living in an uh, in informal economy who just live with uh, with cash and no no bank account but uh, some questions are uh, uh, can be yeah, uh, adapted and, uh, and they are interesting so Knowledge is definitely not enough. And that's one issue with the OECD um, definition. They, they put everything at the same level. But um, uh, for me, knowledge is um, uh, is really little. And uh, there are different steps. Uh, there's a hierarchy that the definition doesn't really capture. So the let's take needs and wants is like the, the basic things. I mean, all expenses are not the same. So our needs and, and some are, are, are wants. Even though I, I often question that, you know, we, we, that could be a, a topic for another uh, webinar already. But uh, the uh, it's something that yeah important to put priorities and expenses. So if you uh, the process is really can be um, um, cut into three pieces. Uh, you want people to understand that that some expenses are different from others, but you also want people to be able to do it. And uh, to have a real impact, you want people to apply it to their own uh, uh, money regularly, not just once. Okay, oh, well, last Monday, I just yeah, I made a, made a distinction between needs and wants, and that was it. And you, you, 
people don't do it anymore. You want, really want people to, to change their behavior. So it's about knowledge, skills, and behavior. And behavior is much bigger. Okay. And that's, uh, as I told you with the, uh, the bankers example, it's, it's, you don't care if they know, actually. You, you want people to apply. And that's what you're going to, uh, to measure is your, uh, the real uh, uh, impact. And uh, there's one thing that you need to be aware uh, uh, of, and that's something that you can uh, uh, keep in mind when you when you run programs, is that people are not motivated to change and are going to change. So uh, that can be um, uh, one thing that uh, when you build a program, instead of jumping right away into how to do budget, how to save, and, and so on, um, build their motivation, why they would want to do that. Uh, and that can be um, uh, like an awareness campaign on uh, why the issue of um, uh, not planning is this, this, this. Uh, so, uh, uh, for example, we, we run a, a, um, a program which is more awareness on, on debt in Cambodia because um, uh, I know Nepal has, a, has a, a lots of debt issues, but there are many people are indebted in, in both countries. And one of the things we, we used uh, was pictures and uh, there was a picture with money with burning for example if you don't pay your, your debt if you take too much debt you kind of burn your money because as soon as you get an income then it's going to uh, be used to pay back debts things that you know advertising uses pictures and you we usually remember them it's the same way it's to kind of trigger an awareness and once this awareness is built, then you can start uh, uh, building some knowledge and then some skills and then uh, gradually uh, change the behavior. So, for example, needs and wants to the, the knowledge part would be to understand that all expenses are not equal and, and to start categorizing expenses. Um, then the skills would be to be able to do a budget. And I will say it again, but a budget is a skill. It's definitely not a program's goal. Okay. Uh, and uh, then when the real impact you're going to have is when uh, people regularly, as soon as they get an income, they do prioritize family expenses. And that takes time. So that's really the three, the three steps. So if your indicator is a simple questions on listing a few expenses and asking them, what do you think are needs? What do you think I want? You're just going to measure the knowledge, and uh, you have no idea if they uh, if they can plan for the example these, these expenses or whether they really themselves uh, every month or every week prioritize their uh, their expenses. So you don't know if your program has a real impact. So you want to measure behavior. Yeah. And okay, behavior changes, and so one uh, one question uh, that you may ask is: Do you do a budget, or to be a bit more precise, have you done a budget this last month, for example? Um, the uh, and I attended. I remember the. Um, some time ago, so it was before COVID, so it was some time ago, uh, I attended a, a conference on financial education and, and uh, there were yeah, many educators, there were thousands of, of us. And uh, we all asked that question in our measurements. I don't know if uh, that the kinds of questions you've, uh, you've asked, so do you do a budget? And we all shared the same experience is that, so typically you do a measurement before, you do a pre-training uh, questionnaire, and then you do a post-training tra uh, questionnaire, and you see what has changed. And all of us, uh, we realized that the, um, the measurement was worse after the training than before. Why? Because um, people thought they were doing a budget, then I attended the training and we ran a budget uh, exercise. And then, uh, and as true, it's not just with AMD McCree, but with the uh, many organizations who are attending this uh, uh, this seminar. And then people realized that, oh no, what I was doing was nothing like a budget actually. So they realized that they uh, they didn't know. So that's the first issue is um, uh, people may not know what they, they don't know. 
So uh, when you ask questions which are a bit technical, uh, they, they may not know. Or maybe even things like debt, they may not be fully aware what debt, maybe they, they don't consider debt to a friend as being a, a debt. Uh, and uh, so you have to be yeah, very careful in the, in the way you, you phrase the question because they... Um, uh, learning new things may really change the the questions most of the the financial education uh indicators and the oecd is, is the same uh, rely on self declaration it's it's really hard to do uh, otherwise so you ask people about their situation so and uh, so they can yet yeah, tell you they do a budget and then they end up thinking, oh, no, I didn't do a budget. So that's one issue with the self-declaration. Uh, another issue is um, they might just not remember. And um, luckily, we're not computers and our head is not uh, full of numbers. So you might ask them, for example, yeah, how much debt uh, uh, do you have before the training? And, and they have kind of a number in head. And then during the training, you um, uh, one of the things you are uh, um, you really focus on is listing all your debts, having the, the the right papers and so on. So they do that. And at the end of the of the training, uh, uh, when they go back home, they um uh, they really list all their debts. So um, they end up with a bigger number. Because they didn't remember, and and most of the numbers, and and that's something I remember doing it in, in Nepal for the the Save the Children um, a project. Uh, we we ran interviews, so we went to in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the low mountains. I've understood that the the hills and mountains in 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 Nepal. So what I thought were mountains were actually just hills for for Nepali, oh, yes. and we 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 ran a, uh, we went to a few villages and uh, and interviewed women mothers uh, mostly and uh, it was very hard to get um, consistent answers it's not just I mean I, I've done it in, in other uh, uh, I did it in, uh, in Burkina Faso also same same issues people um, have some numbers in head but um, they don't um, uh, if you ask the question a bit differently they're going to give you different numbers so it's um, uh, it's really difficult to, uh, uh, to have a clear picture of their financial situation by just uh, uh, interviewing them because it and, if you were asked, you would do the same. I mean, some numbers we we tend to remember them, uh, especially the, like like the the bad news or the, uh, uh, the 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 invoices, the bills that we want to uh, we have to pay. So we, usually these numbers we remember them, but um, things which are paid regularly, for example, we're not computers, so we we're not going to have a, a full picture of how much we spend on food, for example, because we we spend a bit every year. Uh, every day so that's uh, uh that's normal but it means that the we're really biased in the way we see our own financial situation so that questions any self declaration uh, um, um, indicator the other issue too i mean money is very emotional it's very social and uh, when you ask people some questions so typically questions before the training and after the training try to measure these behavior uh, changes people may not want to tell you uh, for whatever reason uh, either they don't want to tell you uh, that their situation is, is really bad they don't want others to know they, they don't fully trust that this information is confidential even if you really tell them that uh, it is confidential and they, they, they don't want uh, other family members or sometimes even their spouse to know that their, their situation is, is bad. Or on the other hand, um, your NGO, they're kind of expecting some help from you. So they make the situation worse. And uh, so it's um, all this makes all the, the self declaration uh, 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 measurement very uh, or impact very uh, very difficult you you don't get very high quality uh, answers so what can you do uh, so a few ways of uh, of doing that you can try to um, um, take the emotional personal part uh, out of the uh, uh, of the question and you ask people questions about somebody else. 
using um, um, stories or, or scenarios. You have um, the OECD um, um, questionnaire uses that, but mostly for knowledge. They ask, yeah, I think that there's one question about friends who have, uh, uh, like, so I think it's five friends who have uh, uh, $100 and they, they want to share it equally. How much uh, would that make? Although I think that's more of a math question than financial education. Uh, but uh, they, they have a few scenarios like that. I suggest you use that also for behavior changes, actually. Because uh, we, we're always good at seeing others, other people' uh, issues or problems and giving advice and something. We, we don't want to solve our own issue, but giving advice is something that is kind of universal. We, we like doing that. So uh, the uh, what you can use is, uh, is some scenarios, and I gave you two examples. So if your program is about saving and uh, avoiding debts and so on, you could use uh, the first example is, and you you ask this question before the training and you ask it again after the training, maybe one month uh, after. Uh, so you have this person who wants to uh, uh, to buy a motorbike and he earns $200 or whatever uh, currency every month. And you can have a multi-choice. Okay, what would you advise him to, uh, uh, to do? Take a loan or save every month and then buy the motorbike or ask friends to, uh, uh, to lend him money, buy the motorbike and then see what happens and yeah, maybe borrow money for these uh, daily expenses. Think carefully whether he needs a motorbike and, uh, and list all the expenses because um, uh, in either case, I'm sure you you have that experience of people buying either a car or a motorbike and then they uh, they don't have the money to buy petrol so uh, uh, or to, to repair it when it breaks down. So thinking about all the costs and how much you can afford and, and whether you can afford uh, a motorbike and look at the different models and so on. And uh, so if you ask these questions before and after, see if there is any change in the answers before the, uh, the training and, and after the training. Or you can leave the question open and, and see uh, so that you don't influence the, uh, the answer and uh, you see whether the, the answer has, uh, has changed. The, it's very different than asking, oh, you think of something you bought, it's a bit big, uh, last month, and how did you buy it? Did you borrow? Did you? It's very personal. It can be very emotional, and people are not uh, necessarily going to tell you either the truth or they might be stressed and so on. So you get um, uh, a bit higher quality answers uh, when you ask that kind of questions on a neutral uh, uh, scenario. Uh, another example is, uh, if, for example, your uh, your target group uh, is people who have daily income and they're really struggling with saving enough to pay for uh, uh, monthly expenses. So uh, you can have that kind of, uh, uh, of question. Anna pays her rent and uh, she has daily expenses. She takes care of her child. She has to, um, uh, to buy food and, uh, and so on. Uh, and she earns a, a daily income. But the trouble is that her rent is paid once a month. So can you give her advice? How can she make sure she can pay um, uh, her rent? And then either you do a multi-choice or uh, uh, answers or you have an uh, open question and you, you just know down what, uh, what people tell you. And, and then you see if these answers change from uh, before the, uh, the training to, uh, to after the training. So behavior is one thing. And uh, and Sarah was right. We want to know people are happily attending a training. Maybe they uh, they would answer uh, with some behavior changes in the in the scenario. But I mean, at the end of the day, what did it really change? And you want to have an idea of the real impact in terms of money, actually, because uh, we talk about financial education. So uh, you may ask questions, and that's type of questions I've uh, I've used uh, on on savings. How much savings do you have? Because that's like facts solid uh, data. If you see that people's savings are, are going up, 
great. Uh, or have if you run a program on, on debts, for example, you want to see uh, debts decreasing thanks to your, uh, uh, your, your program. Another question, and uh, uh, I think the OECD uses it um, also, is how would you cover an emergency expense? Let's see if people would have to, uh, they can take from their savings or they, uh, uh, they can take from, uh, uh, um, they have to borrow or um, I think in the end, the choice of answers uh, given by the OECD, there's not, uh, well, I earn enough uh, to, to cover it, but that's, uh, that can be an, an option too. One thing which is not the, the big challenge with the real impact is the timing. So let's take an extreme example uh, of um, farmers. So they um, they have one crop a year and they sell it once a year. So if uh, um, you do the um, uh, the training, let's say one month after they sold their um, their crop, and you ask them, yeah, how much savings do you have? So obviously they will have. Uh, uh, hopefully, a large amount of uh, of savings. They have to live on it uh, through the uh, through the year, and then uh, you want to measure two months, six months later uh, to see the the impact of the of your training. And you ask the same question, and obviously, uh, their savings would have gone down because that was their only income, and they live on it. And it has nothing to do with uh, your uh, uh, your training. Maybe they, your training was successful and they really prioritized their expenses and, and so on, but the trouble is the timing. Um, another example would be you um, uh, some something that you uh, you include in your training is saving uh, for goals, which is like typical. You have one goal it can be like uh, buying a bike, like in the in the first uh, on the first slide, or uh, paying for the school fees. You have a specific goal. Depending on when you ask, uh, the answer is going to be very different. Imagine that these people do save. I mean, they've been a 100% success rate on your training. They do save. But depending on when you ask the question, maybe they will have saved. They would have used their saving to buy their goal, finally. And then if you, uh, if you ask them the, uh, the day after they, uh, uh, they did the purchase, Obviously, their saving is is down because they used it. Uh, doesn't mean that your say your uh, training was uh, not successful and not efficient. It was, but depending on when you use this uh, this measurement, it uh, it doesn't show. So that's some uh, uh, that's a problem. Another thing to um, uh, that you have to um, to consider is that. Um, your financial situation does not fully depend on uh, your ability to manage money. There are tons of external factors uh, which come in play. So imagine that um, your uh, your participants have been very good students. They really apply. They save a bit. They uh, uh, they try to uh, get out of debt and, and so on. And then. Um, one falls sick, another has uh, an accident, or there's a typhoon. I mean, they're really external factors, nothing to do with financial education, but that impacts directly their uh, their financial situation. So just asking these questions is uh, is not going to be uh, enough. You you don't capture the uh, uh, the issues. So what can you do? Uh, the um, tip two, I really like it. I don't know if it's something that you use is um, is financial diaries. So you just ask um, uh, people. It's self declaration, but if they do it regularly and if you give them the the method, uh, uh, you just uh, ask them to uh, to note down their main expenses, like every week, and you do that for a long period. And then you analyze uh, uh, that. This, uh, this enables you to see, uh, it, to analyze what comes from external factors, to, uh, to see the timing. Okay, I can see that the, the savings all of a sudden go down. But then when I look at the expenses, I see, oh, yes, they, they pay the school fee. Or, oh, yes, they had a big repair. So you can see the, uh, uh, you can really analyze and 
the best is to analyze it with them so that these tools help them. And the usually the people who uh, are involved in these financial diaries uh, projects, uh, the ones noting down the families, they usually tell that um, that helped them to control their expenses by because by noting it down, they uh, they starting being more uh, aware of what they spend and uh, uh, being more careful in, in some choices. So in a way that kind of influences the measurement, also influences the impact, but at least you have good quality uh, um, uh, uh, data. The, uh, don't neglect also open questions. And uh, so, as I say, if people were happy after your training, well, let's just ask them what made them happy. And uh, uh, that's one question we, we asked, um, speakerly after uh, several questions at the end of our uh, measurement, we ask what has changed in your life since the training and that you can, yeah, you because of, or thanks to the training. And uh, we, uh, obviously back maybe about 10, 10 or 12 years ago, we had a program in um, uh, with factory workers in China, and to this answer, uh, we were very surprised, happily surprised. Uh, I think there was more than a third said, "Oh, I stopped smoking," because by noting down their expenses, they realized that yeah, cigarettes were expensive, and that that uh, the uh, the whole impact of cigarettes on one month uh, uh, made them yeah be aware awareness again awareness then brings motivation and, and then brings behavior changes. And uh, they say, well, I, I stopped smoking thanks to the, uh, to the training, thanks to noting down expenses. Uh, others said, I stopped drinking. And uh, others said, I stopped gambling too. So these, we never ask a question on, have you stopped smoking after the training? So when, uh, I'm not sure we would have the same answers if we had asked directly and uh, and then the the goal of the training was not about uh, 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 cigarettes actually it was more about uh, uh, avoiding debt and, and living on a, on a monthly income for the for the factory workers so um, but when you have very open questions now like that you can capture things that you uh, you hadn't uh, um, intended in your training uh, we, we had I think it was in um, in uh, DR Congo we had um, uh, a few answers about um, the the quality of dialogue within the family too uh, spouses were not arguing anymore. They could talk about um, uh, money without big arguments. So that's the kind of things that are, uh, are interesting to, to capture. So I told you uh, there are a few things in the, in the definition that I, uh, I, I kind of question or I, I, I find a bit problematic. Um, what do you think? What uh, when you read at the when you read again this uh, this definition, what are the things that um, you don't fully agree with? You can yeah uh, put that in the uh, in the chat. I'll take the microphone as you want. There are two words which I have question. No? Okay. Well the, the first one. Let's see if that works. Yes, that's the sound financial decision. It's um the way it's phrased, it's as if there's only one good financial decision. And uh, and financial education or financial literacy is not is not maths. Okay, in maths, yeah, you can have when the the friends who have one hundred dollars, uh, the five friends, uh, they have to share it equally. There's one answer. Okay, uh, but uh, there are certain numbers of financial decisions which are definitely not clear cut, and uh, so so that's that's something you. When you measure the uh, the impact, you need to remember you, you may not have you as a, um, a training designer, as a, a program manager, you have kind of an idea of um, what you want people to do. Be careful. Uh, it might not be what 
they want to do and it might not be in their best interest either. So just be very careful. And one issue, and I think that all of us have, uh, have it, is that most of uh, uh, our financial educators uh, are, are not very low-income people. So we are biased by the way we manage our own uh, money. We are biased by the, uh, we, most of us have never experienced not being able to eat uh, for days because we just run out of money. So, uh, and that's why you remember the, the number four about uh, in, in the first slide about, oh, as soon as I earn money, I go shopping. And and I had that thing. It was the first time I heard it was in Cambodia, but it was not the the only time. Uh, and when you haven't eaten the last twenty four hours, it does make sense because you just finally you've got the income and finally you can and buy food. So uh, the uh, the second one is the individual financial well being. And how can you take that out of the society, out of the family? Uh, and that's uh, that's a big, big issue. And I'm going to give you um, uh, another yeah, real life ex uh, example, uh, which happened to me very early on, actually, when I was in uh, uh, in Cambodia. I ran a, a program back, back north in, in Banteshmar for, for those who are familiar with, uh, with Cambodia. And um, I think two months later or three months later, I came back. So I could yeah, interview people and, and talk to them. And uh, the, the program manager said, oh, you know, Sophie, your program has been very successful, especially with this lady. And I said, yeah, why? And he said, well, you know, she started lending money to others with high interest. She's making a lot of income with it. And obviously for me, that was a completely unintended impact but it was a real impact uh, of the of the training and it kind of scared me and made me think about well, what do we want to do with financial education so if you take it as an individual well-being uh, and without considering the the community you work with uh, you may have um, uh, unintended results and that's a problem and the especially if you work with kind of close communities there in in the case of um Pantechma, there was more of that um, um, a village town so uh, obviously the, the the whole economy was uh, inside the uh, uh, the town so uh, so this uh, tells you first yeah not to judge money is social and you have uh, the, the money is social also in the in the family uh, maybe the um, I think there was a, another example. One one man told me once uh, during a, a training the trainers. He said, "Oh, great! Now you really taught me important things. I'm going to be stingy." Uh, and I was just like, "That's not what I taught, really. I, I don't want you to yeah, stop spending." And uh, so I'm, I'm not going to invite my friends anymore. And he was going to yeah, he, he wanted to kind of isolate himself. Uh, so you you have to be very careful with these uh, uh, consequences and take them into uh, uh, build them in the, in your program so that you uh, uh, you, you don't uh, end up with them, uh, uh, yeah, doing. Uh, encouraging uh, that kind of uh, really selfish behaviors and uh, the the other thing too and that's this individual financial well-being does not capture at all is that there are tons of systemic issues that uh, financial education will not be able to uh, uh, to solve if you don't have a living wage or if you're hit by inflation and that's the case now in many countries uh, if your income is this need not a living wage. I mean, it, you cannot, with this income, pay for food and even like the basic food and pay for rent. Um, you can do tons of financial education. It's not going to solve the uh, the problem. Or uh, one thing, and it's especially in terms of community, um, you can think, oh, let's generate income. Let's help people generate income. And, uh, and there are tons of, um, of uh, income generation, micro businesses, uh, programs around. The issue is that if this program is really in a in a community, in a close community, what you do is just you, you transfer money from one person to the other. So some people are going to be more successful with their uh, with a business, but who do they sell to? They sell to their neighbors, and the neighbors are probably as poor as they as them, and uh, but their neighbors um, uh, are like poorer because they. 
these businesses' income are their neighbors' expenses. So you don't really solve the community issue, you just kind of transfer money from one to the other. And if you add on that uh, loans, especially loans with interest, like micro business, micro uh, finance, uh, actually you just generate these transfers of income. So no wealth created, just transfers of income. And if you add interest on top and the interest goes out of the community because it doesn't stay in the community, it would be uh, from an external lender. So you kind of actually impoverish the, the community. So that's, uh, if you see only the individual uh, story, you miss all that. And, and when I see programs which just um, kind of uh, cherry pick a few successful stories. I'm I'm always uh, uh, at ease because uh, what about the others? I mean, you have three successful women in the in the community, but how did it impact the others? So uh, if you you really have to think about that in your uh, in your program. Um, so to um, uh, to really build a, an, an impactful program you have to assess the situation thoroughly even if you if you have six months for your program you spend three months just really doing interviews doing these financial diaries but to have an idea of all the flows to understand what the, the real financial issues are that's something very uh, uh very important which is uh, going to help you build your um uh your program Phrase it so that um, as soon as you phrase your goals, I'm going to give you um, two examples afterwards. As soon as you phrase your goals, that gives you your indicators. And mind you, a budget is not uh, a goal. Uh, it's a tool to achieve something else. And so that helps you define your, your indicators and take this community uh, uh, dynamic into account. So that two questions you really have to ask you uh, to ask yourself is what changes do you aim for? And, uh, and the consequences, uh, not just at individual level, but at community level. So if we, uh, and I'm aware that yeah, just a few more minutes. Uh, so if, if you uh, if you take the, the a case, which is yeah, uh, I had this case um, uh, recently in uh, in Cambodia, is a program approached me and say, oh, you know, we have a big problem. Our youth just buy uh, expensive smartphones, and you know, before COVID, um, we tell them no, but now. I mean, everybody has to have a, a smartphone to be able to study and then some courses are still online and so forth. And um, so you have to reassess the situation. I mean, what's the problem with buying expensive phones? They can afford it. It's not a problem, actually. Uh, so, but if buying an expensive phone means that they borrow money and, and that was the issue, actually, they don't have enough to eat. And uh, so that's... Analyzing the situation makes you uh, find what your program goal is about and helps you measure it. So you're going to have, uh, your goal is to keep enough, so you don't forget about the phone, is to keep enough for your basic needs. That's really what do you want the youth to do. Whatever you buy, that's your choice, but at least you have to keep enough money for rent and, and for food. So impact indicators uh, may be like, how many meals do you eat per day? And have you recently skipped um, uh, a meal because you didn't have enough money? So if you ask this question before and after, then that gives you an idea of the impact. And then you can go back to the funder saying, you see, thanks to the training, well, 30% of the students have stopped skipping uh, a meal uh, because they manage, they keep enough money for, the, uh, uh, for their food. It means also that you build their critical thinking because... Today, it's buying an expensive phone, and maybe tomorrow it will be buying a, a, a motorbike. So, I mean, they can apply this, uh, what they've learned to other situations in their, in their lives. So then you just yeah, build your program. A budget is an important tool. So you always put a budget, but things about uh, thinking about the different expense, uh, uh, different phone they can have. They don't have to have the, uh, uh, the latest uh, iPhone. Uh, thinking about advertising as not being information, but how it can trick us and so on. Just uh, uh, that kind of things that can be in your program. Second example I, I will give is for, um, uh, for families. Typically, uh, fam families who can't buy, uh, who can't pay for school fees. So then again, you have to spend really um, a lot of time to assess the situation, why they can't pay for it, why is it a problem. It might be that 
the the private schools are just too expensive. So are, are there the solutions? And then um, it's why so, uh, it's what I told you about systemic issues. If the only um, available choice is expensive school, then it's a systemic issue. Whatever you do with your program, it's not going to solve it. It's uh, it's about um, uh, building some awareness, building some advocacy so that uh, uh, the, the school uh, changes their uh, their fees and so on. So it's a whole different uh, story if you want to have an impact. But if the school is um, objectively too expensive, even if you run, uh, if you put uh, uh, thousands of dollars in a program to uh, plan and, and budget, and it won't have any impact because um, with their wage, with their uh, income, they this school is uh, is not affordable. So, but if it is, and uh, the the trouble could be, for example, that they earn irregularly, or they they earn every month or every week uh, or every day, but a saving for a yearly expense is just or a quarterly expense is is too difficult, or they save but they they. They don't know where to keep their uh, their savings, and they end up um, uh, spending it. Then that will give you um, uh, some um, uh, ideas of how to build your um, uh, your um, your programs. For example, if keeping the the savings safe is an issue, you're going to focus your training on on financial product and, and services where they can keep this money. Uh, if the issue is uh, that they um, uh, they don't save, then through budgeting and uh, and how you can save uh, this can be uh, uh, this can be addressed and one indicator if your goal is attending school attendance is to you just uh, forget about savings and so on you just ask how many days did your uh, uh, child uh, miss school simply and you want this to increase uh, to decrease sorry and uh, and go further in if the the child uh, misses school why was that a financial problem or was that because she or he was sick? Or maybe the sickness is linked to food. So maybe you need to run, in that case, more like a, a nutrition and, and food budgeting uh, with uh, uh, about food. Because usually eating um, better and, and uh, in terms of quality is more expensive. So uh, uh, doing some nutrition with food budgeting is uh, uh, it, it really goes um, uh, hand in hand. So that gives you uh, uh, an idea of the impact indicators you uh, you can uh, you can use. Sorry, a bit rushed at the end. I can see that it's uh, it's the time. I'm I still have time. So if you uh, if you're okay with uh, uh, spending five or uh, five minutes more, I'm uh, I'm available. And um, if you have yeah questions or if you want to share your uh, your experience, I open the uh, the mic to uh, to anyone. Uh, uh, so thank you, thank you very much for the nice presentation. Um, I learned like, so many things uh, regarding to the impact measurement of this uh, financial education. Uh, uh, we are here in Nepal, uh, also. Uh, but I already said you that uh, we are uh, conducting a session at community level, and where now uh, how we uh, measuring the impact regarding to the family budgeting, uh, we are maintaining a uh, financial diary, which already presented here. We are maintaining a financial diary where, where we basically put the, what the things you really have, uh, need and what are the ones and what kind of um, debts you are receiving uh, from neighbors and banks and other here. So uh, we are comparing uh, uh, before the session, uh, we start that kind of uh, financial diary, and after providing the session, we compare uh, again. We is, uh, uh, ask them to uh, fill that financial diary and compare uh, the two. Uh, in twenty twenty one, we have a great uh, learning and we have good result that uh, we focuses on uh, reducing the debt and uh, the expenses increase the expenses to the children, basically mm -hmm. for the nutrition, nutritional food and uh, avoiding uh, the junk foods. Uh, the pattern, the, the results was that, so that 
فاميلي بيري they have good uh, understanding and they reduces uh, the money spending on junk basically uh, and uh, uh, relating to uh, the uh, debt from outside uh, uh, there is also uh, some Im uh, impact on that they reduce because they realize that yes some of the, the mothers uh, very much uh, been emotionally in the session of, of also there's the because uh, there is uh, a huge loan on that on on her and uh, they cannot pay on timely properly and this is a big issue in nepal also mm -hmm. uh, basically the women are taking the loan from not from the bank and they are from outsiders which is in the big uh, interest so uh, now the, the situation is going a uh, good and the, the Mothers are spending uh, some good money to the children, and uh, it's reduces the uh, uh, I just have uh, a query that before you uh, mention the definition of OECD, there is a word sound. Uh, what what is this sound financial decision? So, uh, what uh, if a person is aware and he uh, he has good attitude and. Uh, Uh, has skills or knowledge, then it's not we can say uh, one can uh, uh, take a sound decision on financial financial decision. Uh, this is my query, and the uh, overall uh, uh, the presentation of today's presentation is uh, uh, some very good. Uh, because I am also going to uh, conduct a refresher training to the community level after three days. So it's very much uh, helpful to me. Thank you very much. Abhi. So if I understand, it's great that you share your experience with financial diaries, and I really encourage you to to do that if you can. I, I know that some, sometimes we just see some people in our participants in a training, and it's it's hard to keep them for a long time, which is an issue. But um, yeah. uh, if you can, that's really the best way to uh, uh, to measure what um, uh, the changes that are happening. The and if you can do that over the over the months, or even yeah, one year after, that's um, uh, that's great. Uh, if I understand your your query well, it's the 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 word sound i question the word sound yeah. financial decision where the um it really depends on the circumstances and let's take debts for example and um, I, i think that most of you who've, uh, who've seen me in the training I'm, i'm not really in favor of taking debts uh, but uh, if you have uh, if you have uh, an emergency It's yeah. usually the your, your, and if you don't have any savings, that's usually the uh, the only thing to do. So if it's life threatening, let's say you have uh, uh, you don't have enough money and you have to um, uh, take your child at the uh, at the hospital. Uh, I mean, the, the sound decision is is to take uh, to take a loan so that you can pay the uh, uh, the um, uh, the hospital. But in general, it's better to save. But you have a, a, a difference uh, in the circumstances whether you have to uh, uh, to take the decision now and uh, and then you will solve the issue later, or uh, you uh, you teach. And I think in the in the workshop we have about debts, you really do the difference between the the prevention workshop, how to avoid debts in general, and the kind of uh, solution workshop when you have debts or you are uh, you have a, an emergency and you ha you have no other choice than uh, than taking debts so a sound decision in that case in case of the emergency would be uh, to ask family or friends uh, re real friends uh, to um, help you without interest uh, so that would be the uh, the sound decision versus going to the first uh, money lender and uh, uh, who's going to charge you um, uh, uh, um, uh, high interest and uh, uh, and really that uh, take advantage of your uh, of your despair and your and your situation So that's why I said sound is um, uh, is relative, relative to because uh, obviously same thing. If you all your friends and all your family members are just as poor as you, 
uh, they just don't have the money to to help you. So, or if you're in bad relationship with your uh, with your family and you just by pride you just don't want to ask them for money. Uh, I mean, all this money is not um, isolated for all the other relationships that we that we have. So that's why I question the the sound. Uh, there are. Uh, there are decisions which have more severe consequences than others. I think I would phrase it like that. Uh, but there, it's not black and white. Uh, you don't have a good financial decision and a bad decision. It uh, it just depends on your circumstances, and it just not, does not only depend on your uh, on finance. It's not math. Finance is definitely not math. It's. Uh, I hope that uh, that helps you with yes, your you. with your question. Any so other? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. You. Uh, are there okay. any other uh, questions or remarks or? Uh... Sophie, will will you share your your presentation? Yes, I can. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. send you the link yeah. of the of the recording, and I'll, I'll send you the uh, the presentation too. And I send you also the uh, the link. Uh, I think there are two links of the uh, OECD um, uh, with the um, uh, I think that their definition and and, and some uh, uh, yeah, general knowledge about um, uh, financial education measurements and uh, the um, the questionnaires that uh, that they use. Okay, and and if we have questions later, are we able to contact you? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm here for that. Sure. So uh, yeah. I'd be okay. always happy to uh, to answer questions. Actually, this, as I told you at the at the beginning, this webinar started with a question from Sarak, uh, who said, well, "How how would you measure uh, your impact?" Uh, so I, yeah, I answered him. I thought, well. Maybe it's something that could yeah interest other people in Sarak, and um, yeah. here we are. So yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And okay, I think you you have great. my you you have my email. So, uh, yes, yeah. Thanks, Ampo. Any other questions? Um, no questions. But I just wanted to um say I really loved looking at this. I come from more of the program design and project management side of things. Um, and Bashan and our team is our male person. So, um. Yeah, I just really thought it was really interesting. It has me thinking more about like when we are designing projects, like to do that with these different indicators in mind, because it definitely, I think when I was thinking of other projects we've done, like I definitely would have done things a bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this was, this was really great. Thanks so much. Okay, great. So I did, that's the uh, that's the goal. It's uh, my goal was to yeah, give you some food for thought. So uh, it's good, good. <laughs> goal achieved, well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank okay. Bye-bye, everyone. everyone. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.